Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host, as always, is... Hello, I am Namio. Uh, my dad is actually about to go to sleep, but he wanted to say one thing before he goes. I'll be over here sleeping. You two go have your sex. <laughs> wow! <laughs> He's been waiting all week to do that joke. Yes. <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And, and of course, we all know that ties into Alexis. <laughs> oh, God. That was, that was one of the funniest things I have seen in a long time. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And it even turns out that even afterwards, Alexis is like, you know what, yeah, you know, she turns around and says, yeah, you know what, you two gonna have sex, go have sex, just, just yeah. do it, be safe. Because, well, but it's, it's so funny, because, yo, know, Molly and TJ are kind of sneaking around, and he comes over to her house, and they're, like, making out, and she's like, let's go do it now, you got the condom? And, of course, the second he pulls out the condom, Alexis walks in the door. Uh-huh. And she's like, I know what you're doing. You know what, you kids, you know what, I, I've changed my mind. You kids, you should just totally have sex. And you know what, since, you know, we want everything to be as safe as possible, you should do it here. So you guys, you, you two just go in the other room and have your sex, and I will be out here getting some work done. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is just... <laughs> Hilarious. And TJ's like, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Molly's like, you did that on purpose. And Bill is like, yeah. Yeah, I did. But you know what? You, 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 we're serious. You, you two, you know, just, I trust you. Go ahead. And, and I won't stand in your way. Yeah, so it's like, finally Alexis comes around. Yes. Well, and I like that she admitted that it was, you know, not all about Molly. It was, you know, at least as much about her and you know her issues and her past and and yeah. all that jazz yeah admit yeah I, 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 yeah she doesn't want molly to make the same mistakes as she did which she i don't know so why good. she's worried about molly making the same mistakes she is molly is way smarter i i mean i don't i i obviously didn't see alexis when she was a kid but i mean it's obvious, you know, when, when Alexis was 16, she was, you know, a rebellious teenager. Well, she grew well, she grew up in the Castine household, what do you expect? Yeah, and, you know, just looking for any kind of escape. Uh, and, you know, that is not Molly. Molly is, you know, a straight-A student who's already a published author. Yeah, I mean... Compared to compared to uh, living under Mikos and being sent off to boarding school and everything, Molly, it, Molly it has has got it easier. You know, she's not as repressed. That's the word I'm looking for. There's not much repression in the Davis household as opposed to the Cassidines. So, or at least at least Mikos and Helena. Uh, which wow, that that's. Those are two names. Even though they were married, you know, and they were husband and wife, it, it's two names I never really think, oh, God, how often do we bring those names up in conversation? <laughs> oh, God. So, um, so yeah, and then Sonny ends up coming up later and asking Alexis for a little favor. Yes. <laughs> and, it, and it's not as serious as, as the... Uh, uh, impersonation makes it sound. It's just he wants Alexa to spy on Julian to see whether or not Rick is funding him, which we'll get into that in a little bit. That's going to go into the holy shit quotient of the week. Oh god damn it! Oh, but you know, of course, Sonny's like, oh come on, do it, and Alexa's like, oh, no, 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 okay, you know. Well, and the the reason that uh, you know. He uh, he uh, gets Alexis, you know, Alex that Alexis agrees, is um, because Sunny points out, you know, these people are are after us, you know, they're they're after people that you care about. We need to find out what's going on. We need to find out if Rick is up to his old tricks again, uh, and because if we don't, people could get hurt. Yeah, and Sunny he seems to forget that Alexis is a Cassidyne. Last time I checked. 
The Cassidines have no issues taking care of their own threats. That's true. <laughs> uh, that's but, a... Yeah, didn't didn't Alexis uh, kill someone? Yeah, she actually ran a kid over with a car. Yeah, Granted, it was it was on ac- it was an accident, obviously, uh... but it was still hit and run, and and she just left him for dead. To be fair, I believe the person in question was um, Christina's very abusive boyfriend. So, yeah. I, I think it's a little justified there. Just a little. Yeah, and uh, speaking of family, we learn a little bit about Nathan's family. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were talking about, we were, you know, there was all kinds of speculation that, uh, you know, Nathan, Nathan had to be in some way related to Nina, and it turns out he is her brother. And yes. He's, he's her baby brother, and he, he has, you know, vague memories of his sister and uh battling his mother is there you know pushing him to you know get justice for nina and put uh uh put silas behind bars yeah and, and uh, I, I i think she is in, in fact i'm sure everybody who is listening would probably scream no shit at this but uh she's totally manipulating her son just because she doesn't like silas well i wonder if she's the one who did it Ooh. That's a good question. Home. Poison your own <laughs> daughter and make it look like her husband did it just to get him out of the picture. Mm-hmm. Because, oh my god, you you had to get help to go to medical school. <laughs> so beneath us. Yeah. Even though now Silas is a, a world-class doctor and, and, mm-hmm. and, and doesn't need your goddamn money. You know, he was willing to sign away all the rights to the money and everything. He just wanted to know, hey, where the hell is she? Where's my goddamn wife? That's all he wanted to know. I mean, yeah. she could have she could have just sent him on a wild goose chase. You know, if, if she was bitchy enough to do it, he then she would have gotten the money. She, you know, he would have signed the will that would no longer have applied to him, and you know, he would have, you know, he would have had something to go on. Yeah. If he believed her, because. I, I, one thing I have noted about Silas, he's not as stupid as, as, as a lot of other characters are. Mm-hmm. You know, he, I mean, all characters have their moments, even Silas, but Silas just seems more intelligent than most. Oh, God. Oh. And, and then, of course, everybody's getting ready for the big engagement party with uh, Nicholas and Britt. But while they're doing that, AJ, he's, he's still in a coma, and Michael's having to make the decision, and... He decides, okay, we're going to go with surgery. And this is after having a talk with his other father. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and I have to say, Sonny is right about AJ in this instant that uh, it was not okay of AJ to put this kind of burden on Michael's shoulders. I would agree it's, if it was intentional. Well, the thing is, it was intentional. Because, you know, when you make someone your medical proxy, that is the whole point, is that they are supposed to make decisions if you are incapacitated and can't make decisions for yourself. Yeah. And he really should have just left that in his mother's hands and not in Michael's, because, yeah. I can agree with that. However, I have a feeling at the time he made the decision to put to make Michael his medical proxy, he did it because he trusts his son trusted him a whole lot and he had no idea that something like this was going to come up i have a feeling that when aj made the decision he's like you know what i trust my son he should have told him yeah. right off the bat i i will i will grant that but you know he didn't anticipate being shot and put in the hospital which really he should have yeah well I mean, let's be honest aj should have you know Expected to be shot at some point, given how many people can't stand him. Chief among those being Sonny. Right. Who actually did shoot him. <laughs> but but I'm, I have a feeling that at the time he did it, it was before everything went down with the LQ and, and Connie well, getting I'm, killed. So I'm not saying that, you know, he, uh, you know, hurt Michael on purpose. I'm saying, like, this is something he should have anticipated. Yeah. I mean, this is... Yeah, he should have put more thought into this, but he didn't because he's AJ. <clears throat> yeah, he does. He does have his doofus moments, his, his dumbass moments, 
And this, yeah, on the one hand, yeah, it is a dumbass moment because it's like, duh, dude, come on. But on the other hand, it's like, I see it as more he's showing that he trusts his son. Granted, there are other ways he could show this exactly. you know, besides that. But that that coming from where AJ is, he sees it as a sign of, hey, I trust you with my life. You know, and yeah, that is a lot of pressure to put on him. I, I, I and, and just, I, I'm seeing both sides on this one, and I can probably argue both ways and just drive myself into a middle point where there's a big old stake in my head. I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, I don't know, so, either, uh, but that's okay. And so the woman that appeared at Kelly's, TJ's mama. Uh, I forget her first name yeah, right which, off the top of my I head. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. Uh, Jordan. 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 Thank you. Is her name? Uh, and uh, you well, you know, uh, you figured it probably was gonna turn out to be TJ's mom because there is a finite number of black people in this town. Yeah, or a finite so, number of of foreground black people. That's true. Uh, and uh, you know. And even some, probably an even smaller number who like totally know Sean enough to get that kind of reaction out of him. Yeah. <laughs> and even then, with Sean teasing about what she's done or what she does or whatever, yes. that that throws another stake into. Oh my God, is she really the one funding Julian? I, I admit, I thought that for a second. That would be a hell of a twist. That would be a hell of a twist. I doubt it's. I, I, she doesn't strike me as uh, the kind of person that, who has that kind of money. No, if that makes but, sense. Yeah, but you never know. I don't know, but uh, you know, she's there because she's really angry about uh, Sean getting involved with Sunny, and she's doubly upset about TJ having wound up in uh, the whole warehouse thing. Which I mean, she has a right to be upset. Yeah. Uh. But she's like, I'm going to unilaterally decide that TJ is coming home with me in the middle of his senior year of high school. Which is like, there's protectiveness, and then there's going a little overboard. Guess which side she's on. <laughs> and, you know, when she finally gets around to telling TJ this, she's like, um, no. No, and also, no. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? It really, I can't blame Sean for TJ getting caught up in the warehouse stuff. No, it, it was TJ. That was not, that, I was going to say, that was not Sean's fault. That was TJ being a dipshit. Yeah. I mean, granted, just a granted naive Morgan was whispering in his ear, but. Uh... Yeah. So that's not Sean's fault. And Sean protected him. He got him out of there. And yes. It, basically, Sean's like, you know what? You fuck with this kid, I will end you. And, you know, that sort of thing. Ah, uh, and speaking of you fuck with this kid, I will end you. Hi, Julian. <laughs> uh, and of course, he's Alexis's date for the thing, and he and Rick are all chummy. Which, of course, sends up the alarms for both Alexis and Sonny. And then suddenly, at one point, Julian gets a text message, and Alexis conveniently drops her drink on him, or spills her drink on him. Yes, that creates was... creates a scene, and, sa and she sees the text message saying, meet in the barn or, or the stable or whatever. No, no, that or was... Or I think that it was, was just, we need then. to meet up. It was just, yeah, we need to meet up soon, and, uh, she didn't see the the next text that said, meet me in the stables, and so she was going around looking and found Rick talking to Cameron, and so, she, you know, obviously, you know, it's not Rick, which, again, you know, we kind of figured that because it would have been too obvious the way that everybody just assumed. Mm-hmm. But do you, do you, and do you want to talk about that reveal now or wait? Um, we'll lead up to it because there are okay. some other things with this particular character I want to talk about as well. Um, but <laughs> but Alexis was uh, was doing a good job of uh, kind of stringing Julian along and uh, <laughs> yeah, try you know doing her best to try and get information out of him without sounding like she was trying to get information out of him. I mean, she was. <laughs> Yeah, that that was that was skill right there. Yeah, not to mention, well, boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, you got to admit those are kind of hypnotic boobs. <laughs> to you, all boobs are hypnotic. Oh. Fair enough. 
Oh, but uh, oh, and, and of course, everybody's reaction when every, when it's found out that Julian is the one taking Alexis to the party, and they're like, "Really?" <laughs> <laughs> oh. So yeah. Um. Let's see. What else do we have there? Uh, of course, Britt. You know, the guilt is eating her up. The guilt has also been eating Brad up as well. Yes. Look, you do have a heart. Oh. And, and of course, Britt writes the letter. You know, the, the confession oh. letter. And can I ju- can I just talk about this for a second? Yes. So, Brad suggests to her, you know what? Write a letter, get it all out, and then burn it. Yeah. But because Brit is an idiot, she doesn't do this in a private place. She sits down in the conference room, grabs a flyer for the nurse's ball, and starts writing this on the back of it. Yeah. And then puts it in an envelope, and then accidentally picks up the wrong envelope to go and burn. And I'm like, okay... If you had been a smart person, a.k.a. someone who is not on this show, uh, you would have <laughs> gone to your goddamn office to do this. Yeah, that, that would have been a much safer place. But because she's stupid, and because someone needs to find it, um, you know, she grabs the wrong one, and her confession is, you know, in a... In a uh, uh, made up into an aura got me heart by Cameron. Yes, gets... yeah. And you know what? Go Cameron. And you know, Cameron has been having a tough time lately because uh, Emma had decided to choose Spencer um, over him, and so he actually skips out on school. Yeah, just, and you just know, is just sitting sitting and moping in front of Kelly's when Rick finds him and is like, "Um, let's call your mom." <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. you know what? Good on him. Like. <laughs> Good guy Rick definitely there cuz cuz he was like okay you know what I can appreciate you uh being upset but uh you need to let your mom know where you are which is a good thing because that about that time Elizabeth was freaking out because the school had called her and told her the Cameron was missing. Mhm. And so, you know, Rick and Rick and Cameron have this heart to heart in Kelly's and he's like, "You know what?" If you really care about this girl, you fight for her. You know, if nothing is set in stone, you know, you you can do this. And so, you know, Elizabeth takes Cameron back to work with her because she still has to finish her shift. And that's when Cameron decides, I'm going to use my art to win Emma back. And so he makes this origami heart. And he's such a sweetheart because, you know, he looks through and he finds a flyer that they couldn't give out anyway because it had writing all over it. Yeah, incidentally, the same writing that... Oh, wait, that's a confession letter. Yes. <laughs> Little does I think he know. I think it's funny that he didn't read it. <laughs> well, he probably figured, ah, whatever, it, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just... He's probably more focused on, okay, must make heart. Must make must heart. Make, must win the girl! Yes. Oh, and, uh... Yeah. So, you know... And he finagles his way to, to the party with, with Rick and Elizabeth... And he gets there, and Emma and Spencer and Cameron are all there, and and of and course yes. Spencer turns into a little douche. Yes, I you know Spencer is such a such an interesting character, but yeah, you know Emma he he's being all like grandiose to Emma and like gets her hors d'oeuvres and is like trying to trying to woo her, and then you know she tells him you know her dad broke the egg, and he's. He starts flipping out, and he's really being a dickbag to her, because he's like, my aunt brought that, you know, say that from the Bolsheviks, or what, whatever it was, whatever the speech was, and mm-hmm. she keeps saying, I'm sorry, it wasn't my fault, and he doesn't let it go, and then after that, he still thinks she's gonna be his girlfriend. She's like, fuck, no. And, and well, and then, you know, Cameron comes in, and he says, you know, here's uh, the origami uh, present that I made for you, Emma. And Spencer grabs it, throws it on the ground, and stomps on it. And that's when Emma's like, um, we're done here. I'm going with Cameron because you're mean. And she, I think she actually says something about, you know, I, I don't care how much money you have. You're not nice or something to that effect. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, of, uh, 
and and, and, and of course they they go off they they do the party they they tell the adults yeah Cameron's my boyfriend now that sort of thing and um, Spencer is off to the side crying or oh, no he comes into the party sees them and then just runs off crying and Sonny goes after him and has a heart to heart with him and Sonny Sonny is like the sweetest sweetest person you know when uh when he talked because there was at least one conversation where he talked about um how he's a much better father than aj and uh you know and i you know what he's right he is one hell of a father and even a father figure to to someone like spencer Mm -hmm. uh because you know he sits him down and he listens and he says you know what uh, I get how much it hurts, but you know it's gonna get better. And uh, dude, uh, you were kind of in the wrong there, because uh, you know, a good girl, a classy girl like Emma, it, it doesn't matter how much money you have. You ha- you gotta treat her right. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it was it was really cute. It was very sweet. Yeah, I don't know so much about. Well, obviously that makes Sonny a good good father. Obviously. If AJ had been in that situation, I would think that maybe he would have done the same thing. I would you like know, to think so. You know, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. I mean, especially, you know, like, when it comes to little kids, because uh, you got to remember, the way Sonny got Michael is, well, through intimidation and force. Because yes. he thought AJ wasn't good enough, and Carly thought AJ wasn't good enough, and Carly had Sonny wrapped around her little finger at the time, if I'm recalling right. So, uh, well, and and reasonably, I think he, even AJ would have admitted that at the time, he wasn't good enough. Yeah, and and thinking back, you probably are right. It's been a while. That was that was I think around the time I was watching a little bit here and there, but um, but yeah, and and no, AJ has not had the best track record. But you know what? You know, up and especially, you know, even after his his, his fall off the wagon and everything. You can't say that he hasn't been trying with Michael. Yeah. You know, he has been making an effort. He's been failing here and there, but but he's been making an effort. And all Sonny can do is say, I'm the better father, I'm the better father. You weren't there when he was a kid. You wouldn't let him be there when he was a kid. You know, you played into AJ's fears and anxieties just so you could say, I'm the better man because I'm the better father. That always, that, that always tends to grind my gears with Sonny. Yeah, he legitimately is a good father, as as as, as uh, Spencer has been has demonstrated, you know, as was demonstrated with Spencer rather. But mm-hmm. that doesn't make it right the way he got Michael away from AJ. No, and, but, and uh, the way that yeah. Sonny is always down on AJ. It, it's like, yeah, I know you don't like him, but you know what? Your son loves his dad. His biological dad. He loves both of his dads. And and for Sonny to just never... It's just... uh. And I can understand some more... And and, and at least some of the uh, latest stuff that Sonny might resent AJ for. Because, you know, hey, he thinks he killed Connie. Which, hey, you know what? It's, It's like a computer. False information in, false results out. So I can't really blame Sonny for hating AJ for killing Connie. Because... That's what he's been made to believe. That's what he's been led to believe. And he does, hasn't seen any evidence to believe otherwise. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've got to say, I'm, I'm <laughs> can you tell that AJ is has become one of my favorite characters over the past year? <laughs> oh. And uh, he's not going to be around for much longer, is he? No, which is sad. Uh, yeah, because I, I, I saw, I think I just saw a headline somewhere. I don't remember if I actually got a chance to read the article saying that the actor playing AJ is going to be leaving uh, to go to another soap. Yeah, which it's sad, but, you know, I, I hope they do it in a way that they can at least bring AJ back later on. Well, yeah, in a that was going to the, the My question was going to be, uh, is he going to die or is he going to be in a uh, plot convenience coma? We'll find out. Because, <laughs> oh, so. you know, that, that, that's one of the things this show seems to like to do, is if a character needs to go away for a while, just put them in a convenient coma and just basically, like, put them on the shelf for a while. Yeah. And, 
Oh, speaking of coming off the shelf, Emily! Emily made an appearance. Well, obviously, ghost, but ghost or spirit or whatever. It's just, they just randomly jump in, you know? It's like, okay, if, if angels and ghosts and spirits can continually pop in, then in this universe, death is cheap. Yeah, I was going to say, death has no meaning. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, it's like uh, Lupa likes to talk about in uh, her charm reviews, you know, death has no meaning because it, you know, dead people don't stay dead. You know, it's it's hard to be super duper sad when you know they're going to come back every once in a while and they're not really gone. <laughs> yeah. And obviously in General Hospital it only it doesn't apply to every character. I mean, there's the obvious ones like uh, Edward and Lila, um uh Tracy's parents, you know, they're they're dead and gone. They're like killed off for real type thing. Um Alan killed off for real. Um Emily was killed off for real. Not ca and and in the case of Alan and Emily, and I think Rick Weber too, you know, they all have the ability. They all, you know, the actors are still around. They can come back as ghosts. They can't do that so much with Edward and Lila because those actors are dead. Yeah. You know, and and the same with certain other characters. But there are some that have remained dead, like uh, Spencer's mother, Courtney, who was Sonny's younger sister. I, I don't remember how she was killed, but I know she was killed. And and obviously she was with Nicholas for a little while, yes. um, but but you know she hasn't made an appearance back as far as I know in spirit or otherwise. And then you have of course Helena and Stavros, which <sighs> god damn it, can't they just fucking stay dead? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they're so much fun. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> and at least Victor, his his reappearances are justified in that the character never died. Yeah. So he, he he's justified in that. Uh, but speaking of Cassidines and 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 that, get back to Nicholas, you know, seeing Emily, and she tells him, you know, yeah, you better be goddamn sure, dude, you know, you know that that this is who you want to be with, that this is who you love, and Nicholas is sure, as For far now. as I'm seeing, yeah. Oh, and oh god, where else? Where else is gonna go? And this ties into Luke, who is still on the what the fuck train to what the hell are you doingsville? Okay, yeah, because what happens is you know he's still like gross, gross, gross hitting on Kiki, mm -hmm. and uh, she's still trying to you know, be like no, 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 and also no. And when Tracy kind of catches him being all creepy, um, he says that Kiki hit on him. Yeah, that's like, um, that, 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 that red light up there on, on the top of my head, that is the out-of-character alarm, because Luke, in all of the years he's been on the show, all of the years I have watched him, studied him, seen what he has done, yeah, he's had his moments where he was... You know, you know, he's he's basically an anti-hero, an anti-hero yeah. scoundrel. But this, just no. Even back in the '70s, when he raped Laura, his immediate reaction was, "Oh my God, what have I done?" And and in the circumstances around that, he, you know, he was working for the mob at the time. He was hired to hit, I, I think, a prominent political figure. And he's like, you know what? There's no way I'm going to get out of this alive. So we went to to the disco. And he got drunk. Laura happened to be there. He raped her right there on the floor. And immediately after, he is like, oh shit, what have I done? So, you know, so so that, that there proves that, yeah, Luke did a really horrible thing, but he, he still had a conscience. Yeah. You know, he still realized, oh shit, I fucked up. And... Eventually, Laura forgave him too. Well, obviously they got married, but yeah. But it's oh. one. I, I remember. I've read that that was one of the more controversial things back in the day. Was like I would imagine. Wait, wait she forgave her rapist and fell in love with him. What? No, well, not people don't do that. Well, pe some people do, but it's very rare. But so it's it's a little more realistic than you might think. But it's it's about as rare as say um. You know, the real Luke, and I'm gonna say the real Luke because I don't think this is the real Luke. 
I was going to say that. I, I was I was waiting for an opportunity. I, I think that when they took Luke away, they replaced him with someone else in one of those magic masks. Probably, and I've already been... The, the possibilities have been rolling through my mind. Because um, I, I do know that um, Tracy's older son, Ned, is supposed to be coming back at some point. Mm -hmm. Um... And it's like, oh okay. God! I hope it's not her son. I that hope would not be creepy too. As hell. That would be. <laughs> Although at, at one point Ned did bed Monica. <laughs> Although he didn't realize she was his aunt, so aunt by marriage, but still. Ugh, but that's that's still way different than your mother. This is true. But, no, because uh, you know, I I don't I don't know who I'm, I'm not going to speculate who might be under the mask. But the reason that, uh, the main reason that I think that this is someone else and not, you know, batshit crazy Luke is because whoever has been funding Julian has been doing it for years. And Luke has no motive to do this, as far as I know. Right. Uh, and, and, and yes, that is, that is the big thing for the end of the week. Julian goes out to meet with his, with, with his backer. And lo and behold, there is Luke. And I almost screamed, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, I was sitting here going, wait, huh? Like, it wasn't even like a, oh my god, it was like, wait, huh? I'm so confused right now. Oh. Yeah, that that's when my mind started thinking, okay, obviously yeah. it's somebody else because, because obviously the reason why, wait, wait, why is Julian being, why is Julian a Port Charles? To take down Sonny. Somebody's yeah. backing him, obviously, to take Sonny down. Luke has no interest in taking yeah. down Sonny. Luke, his son yeah. is married to his daughter, for one thing. And for another thing, Sonny and Luke have been friends for years. So Luke yeah. has no reason to. But whoever is masquerading as Luke does, for one reason or another. And, and I, I actually have a speculation, because one of the companies that... The company that was... That was uh, mentioned a while back uh, Barrett Enterprises Barrett Enterprises Barrett, Brenda Barrett was friend, also friends with uh, Ned Ashton you know, you know Tracy's mm -hmm. son he, his father Lord Ashton I forget his first name right off the top of my head it's on the wiki back in the late 80s early 90s Lord Ashton came to Port Charles did some things obviously at one point he had a thing with Tracy and during the whole cartel business back in like 91, 92 with Faison and all of that, one of his one of the things he needed to do, well, what he was aiming for rather, was gaining control of ELQ through Tracy, mm -hmm. with the option to possibly off Tracy. Obviously, it didn't happen. The cartel was taken down, dismantled by the Port Charles Police Department, <laughs> which, <laughs> which hey, you know what? Give them credit where it's due. And as they, far as they I do know, accomplish things when it's dramatically convenient. Yes, as far as I know, he is still alive. So it could very well. This would be a hell of a tieback. It could very well be Lord Ashton under the guise of Luke. Well, I, wh whoever it is, they are doing one hell of an acting job. Oh yeah. I mean, and, g g I mean, Tracy is. 100 I mean she's known Luke forever and she is 100% convinced that this person is Luke although she's starting you could tell she's starting to get suspicious yep uh cuz I don't think she quite bought the whole uh get, even though she's uh you know distrusts Kiki for many reasons um she didn't seem to quite buy the whole she hit on me story. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute, this something's not adding up here. Who would want to hit on Luke? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there, there are people out there that think Luke is a hot old guy. So you know, yeah. I mean, hey, there are people out there that that when Peter Capaldi was named as the new Doctor, some people were like, oh, he's not young and hot, and some people were like. Bitch, you serious? This guy's motherfucking hot. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, so uh, at th more at the party. Uh, I, I did want to go into uh, this particular point before we, we we talked about Luke and 
or or quote unquote Luke, or or fake Luke. Yeah. Um, then uh, what Luke, fake Luke had done was he pissed off Nicholas. Just <laughs> apparently he didn't have his his info straight, and the way he ended up pissing him off was he looked at Brit like yeah you know congratulations she's a hot piece of ass. <laughs> Q spit take from Nicholas. <laughs> yes, that was hilarious. <laughs> He's like, wait, wait, what? The fuck? <laughs> and that should alert Nicholas right there. They're like, wait, something is off. Well, uh, he said something about, like, someone said something about those two don't like each other. Yeah. Because well, for a while, the Spencers and the Castadines have, have had this feud, which was born back in 81. Because, you know, you, you kill the family patriarch... Granted, in self-defense and trying to save the world at the same time, you, you tend to you know, become you, you tend to get on somebody's blacklist for that. You know, just saying. And just all throughout the years, the Spencers, the Castines, been feuding, firing shots. You know, metaphorically speaking, firing shots. Yeah. Sometimes literal. Yes. Just back and forth and forth and back, and is just. Eh. But uh, Nicholas. He he seemed he seemed to be the one that was like you know more accepted into the family because well he is Laura's son mm -hmm. and Luke you know his, his you know before Tracy came along you know and before everything died between Luke and Laura his one great love was Laura so for her yeah. sake and he, and still out of respect for her hey you know treat Nicholas like family yeah. especially since uh, his daughter and his son. You know, they, they also accept him and, and love him just like he was their biological brother. So to see that turnaround, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, whoever is playing Luke obviously didn't get some of the memo. Maybe he did, I don't know. I don't know, and he was like taking pot shots at the Cassidines, and I'm like, mm -hmm. this is this is weird. But... Yeah, there's, there's history coming about here, and and of course... With, I think I mentioned earlier, Brad is starting to feel a lot guilty, and he almost tells Lucas. Yeah, it's because, uh, you know, he, you know, invites Lucas to be his date, mm -hmm. and uh, they're hanging out, and yeah, you know, Lucas keeps talking to Brad about how awful Lulu, uh, what an awful time Lulu's going through, believing, you know, that Ben is Dante's son, and but not hers, um, and Brad starts to, starts to bear his soul, but, uh, you know, Obrecht, and th this is, this is a cliffhanger that, uh, I really want to see resolved, because Obrecht, you know, she has now fully committed to keeping Brit secret. Mm -hmm. You know, she doesn't know about Brit's stupid confession letter, but you know she is she is fully committed, and so when she starts to see Brad uh, slipping, uh, she you know she tells first she tells Britt to you know you know get, you know put a lid on that basically, and Britt tries and fails, and basically she's like you know what else would would you have me do? And Obrek's like I'll take care of it. And so she uh, interrupts Brad before sh he can tell Lucas the whole truth and gets rid of Lucas and basically tells Brad, uh, you're never going to be able to, to spill this secret. And I'm like, is she going to try to kill him? Well, they're on a parapet. It is at a Cassidine party. <laughs> there is history behind that. Oh, great. Um, yeah, somebody is taking... It, it, it seems like always at one of these parties somebody's somebody's gonna take a tumble and it looks like Brad's gonna be that one <sighs> and, uh. it's, and it's gonna be too bad because it's not gonna keep Brit's secret because you know because me Elizabeth other, yeah Elizabeth, otherwere, uh, elsewhere in the mansion <laughs> you know Elizabeth went looking for Cameron because you know she was you know she knew he was there to try and win Emma back and you know she just goes into the the sitting room and all she sees is uh, Cameron's origami heart, you know, destroyed on the floor. And she's like, oh, and so she picks it up. And I think she was going to try and uh, fix it. But then she saw the letter and she started reading it and immediately went, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Yeah. And as she's contemplating going to tell Nicholas, 
Yeah, you know, or, or well, I'm assuming as she was at the time, because Rick came in and basically called her out on it, like, "What, you're gonna go tell Nicholas first? What, 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 why would you tell him first? Is it because you want him back?" That sort of thing, <laughs> questioning her motive there. And then he's like, "Dumbass, go tell Lulu." Well, and and to Elizabeth's credit, she does listen to him, and she's like, "Oh crap, you're right." And yeah. you know, she's like, "You know what? You're right. I need to show this to Lulu first. And that was, you know, the the third cliffhanger was her going in and being like, "Lulu, I need I need to show you something." <sighs> it's about Ben. And yeah. meanwhile, all this time, you know, at at, at least at some point. You know, during the party, Lulu had went up to see Ben, and, and she was hanging out with him, talking to him, working through her feelings and everything. Tracy come in, they had a little thing. Britt came and got the baby, took Ben down, and showed him off to everybody. And, and of course, Sunny and Olivia are are cooing are, are over him, and, and oh. <laughs> well, and it's kind of funny because, you know, first Olivia's Olivia is like, you know what? Ben kind of looks like Lulu, and she says that to Dante, and Dante's like, "Would you don't don't say that to Lulu?" <laughs> Except when I, I think it was Olivia and Lulu who were talking. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Lulu's uh, like, "Yeah, he does look a little like me." Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do have to say this this moment when everybody was waiting on the docks, um, uh, I think it was Lulu. You know, telling Dante something about, like, hey, yeah, you're just like your mother. You're impatient. Both of them look at her and say, "Oh, we're not. I'm not impatient. Well, no, I'm not impatient." <laughs> it's like, right. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and one other thing, uh, I I neglected to touch upon a little bit. It's relatively a small bit, but it's kind of important. Um, when uh, the surgery was finished, Patrick came out and. You know, it, it basically, he, he's saying, you know, yeah, he may not wake up. It, it, we might, it didn't work as well as he thought it would, or what have you. And last time we see Patrick, he's still grappling with, oh my God, did I, did I just, you know, rush into this and fuck it up? Yeah, and I, it, you know, going going back a little further before um, the surgery. Patrick was in his office, and he was really angry. And I'm like, you know what? It's about fucking time. He got angry at Robin for the bullshit she's pulling. And, uh, you know, he's had me talked with Elizabeth for a little while, and, you know, she's basically kind of like, you know, it's, it's, you know, Robin wouldn't do this if she didn't think it was important, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know... And, uh, you know, every, and Patrick says, everybody's sorry about this except Robin. And I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm looking at this going, please, 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 you know, take that to its logical conclusion. Figure out that Robin is being a self-centered bitch here. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that, that that breaking point will come at some point because, yeah. Um, <laughs> mm. And, uh, but, you know, he's still got that hanging over his head, and Elizabeth actually asked him, and she's like, you know, are you okay to operate right now? And he's like, I'm fine, fine, fine. But, he goes, you know, when, when, when he comes out of surgery, and I'm sorry, if I can just talk for a second. Mm-hmm. So, sometimes, when this show tries to do medicine, it does okay. And then there are times when it does stuff like everything that has been happening to AJ. Mm -hmm. Because first, okay, AJ came into the hospital with a gunshot wound to the chest. Now, somehow, that gunshot wound caused an aneurysm, even though that is not possible. Huh. In real life. A, a gunshot wound c- can cause a stroke because, you know, you can throw a clot. Right. But it can't cause an aneurysm. An aneurysm is when um, a blood vessel wall um, basically uh, overextends or, or becomes really weak and there's a chance that it might rupture and bleed in the brain. That is not something that can happen because of a gunshot wound. And then they go in to do surgery to repair the aneurysm, and somehow 
AJ's brain, like, spontaneously started to swell. And, like, I, I even asked my mom about it, because uh, she's, my mom is an, an, an RN, and I'm like, this doesn't seem like it could possibly be connected. And she's like, no, no, it can't be. Because in order for the brain to swell, there has to be some sort of trauma to the brain. So unless they, like, really, really fucked up opening up his skull bad enough that it would cause inflammation, yeah, that that's, that's nuts. That, yeah. no. And so... <laughs> So, like, in, in GH land, uh, several things that could not possibly be connected to one another are connected, and now AJ is in a coma for the foreseeable future, and his aneurysm is not fixed because the swelling in his brain that apparently Patrick maybe possibly should have anticipated uh, prevented them from going in and doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, this there there are no doctors helping to write this show. <laughs> they might do well to hire some. Maybe, just just maybe. <laughs> I mean, this is this is ABC. Uh, I mean, what was it? Grey's Anatomy that it was on ABC. You know, yeah, and, and I, don't I don't know how medically accurate Grey's Anatomy was, you but know, if they I... had doctors on board there, they could come over to GH. Like, come on, come on. Yeah, I don't know. I I only saw like one or two episodes of Grey's Anatomy, and I don't remember much medical stuff from that. I just remember it was a lot of a lot of drama yeah. and a lot of people fucking, like way <laughs> like way more than GH. Well, there. You, well, yeah. Which I wouldn't be surprised if it was honestly more the same, but considering GH is you know a, a daily. A daily yeah. soap opera. It's and an spread out, much, diluted a little bit too, and a much larger cast. <laughs> oh yeah, and then of course you have Grey's Anatomy, which is compressed into what thirteen to twenty-six episode seasons or something. Something like that. I don't even know. Yeah, so you, you have everything compressed, and then so of course it, it may just seem like there's much more sex when really it's probably about the same. Yeah, may I? I have no idea. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, what else have we, what else have we not covered now? Um, let's see. Oh yeah, Sam and Silas have this little moment. <laughs> they where... totally have sex in his office, and it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like yeah. It's like uh, you go for it, kids. Yes, <laughs> you get it. <laughs> Probably not the first time, won't be the last time, that people have sex at the hospital. Oh. <sighs> I'm sure. <laughs> oh. But uh but also at, at at the party, the the Sam starts confiding in Silas about, you know, her past with Rick and and she's like, Okay, do you wanna go somewhere you wanna grab a drink or somewhere go somewhere else? And Silas is like, Let's get the whole let's get the bottle. Yes. <laughs> and so they go to the stables and she confesses everything to him about Rick, how she slept with Rick, you know, when he was with her mom, and 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 then she was in a bad place, and all of that good stuff. And, and she well, didn't know Alexis stuff. was her mother either. Yeah, and it's just it's like wow. Again, this was a point where I wasn't watching, so 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 it's stuff I'm having, I'm kind of hearing more for the first time, and it's it's holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, and then she wanted, and she wanted to make sure he knew. Yeah, I, I'm not the same person anymore. I'm, I'm changing. I'm different. And he's like, you know what? Whatever. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll still, be, I'll still be with you. I mean, come on, I'm no position to judge. I mean, people think I killed, I tried to kill my wife here. So you know. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, and Sam's big claim to fame. This stuff I do remember hearing about. I seem to remember. I think she was a con artist at one point. I don't. I don't. I'm not uh. quite sure. But I'd, I don't. I'd, you would know, have. I'd have to look it up. But uh, yeah. <laughs> and of course, they probably had sex in the stable. Probably. I don't know. Whatever it was they did, they were done by the time Luke and Julian got there. Which I I I I still think I still think it's somebody masquerading as Luke, and that person mm. is probably Lord Ashton. Especially since, especially because of the focus on ELQ. 
because you know because if you'll remember when the Jeromes first came to town ELQ was you know part of the reason why they, they part of their grab for power and you know and you know it's like okay that's starting to click into place a little bit if they're going after ELQ they have a backer and the backer also bought Barrett Enterprises if it's Lord Ashton he probably bought you know he probably was able to buy them off of Julia who, who again was you know friend you know Brenda's older sister friends with Ned Ned and his now ex-wife Lois um so you know Julia was like okay you're Ned's father okay I'll sell them to you or whatever or maybe you know he used Ned's name or what have you I, I I'm sorry until I see otherwise it's Lord Ashton that 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 well, that, 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 that we is shall my, find out yes hopefully oh so yeah but I think I think that is about everything isn't it I'm not, I'm not, it feels like it yeah because I don't see anything else I got I got a mini cheat sheet here I'm actually looking at the <laughs> synopsis on iTunes <laughs> which is which you can get these episodes on iTunes now you know two bucks an episode so if you have like a few hundred bucks a year you want to blow on General Hospital I say do it <laughs> I, I, I yes, I did the math. I I have Hulu Plus, mm -hmm. so that's how I get them. Yeah, and that's only eight bucks a month. So, yeah, Hulu Plus is definitely cheaper in that regard. Or if you don't have any kind of money at all, you can still try and get it on YouTube. Or if you want to wait a week, you can watch it on ABC. You know, but ABC dot com. Yeah. It's like no. Yeah, or just I, I, hired it. I'm sure that's out there. Yeah, well, technically that's what YouTube does. That's true. Very, very technically. But, um, so with that, uh, I know it's a little early to be to be calling it, but, you know, it's time to get out of here, and we'll we'll see what happens in this next week. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to it, because... <laughs> yes. Oh, things are going to come out in the open. It's going to be great. Yee! So, so much drama! Yes. So if people wanted to direct their drama at you, Namio, where could they find you? <laughs> um, I would I would rather not have drama in my personal life, but uh, you can find me on the interwebs. Uh, you can find me on Hulu uh, at Naomi Washburn. Uh, you can find me on Tumblr uh, as Namio's Corner. You can find me on the fabulous rtgomer.com. And you can find me on Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. Wait, find you on Hulu? Did I say Hulu? You said Hulu. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm looking at Hulu. Did I... But I think you mean Twitter. I'm... Twitter. God, I don't even... I'm, I'm tired, I'm sorry, never mind. Yeah, I'm we, on we Twitter. Are... Yes, she is on Twitter at, at, at the Naomi Washburn, the stuff and the things. It, it, we're, we're recording this late at night, later than usual, so we're both a little out of it. Uh, if you want to find me on social media, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at Gomer21XX. You can also find my stuff on RTGomer.com and NerdVice.com. And if you want to support the show, in fact, I would really much appreciate it. Um, support the show for website space, equipment upgrades and upkeep, all of that good stuff to help keep the show going. And, and let's be honest, I could use an audio upgrade, as you could probably hear. Um, if you want to do all of that, patreon.com slash gomer21xx. And I also must say, if you want some fabulous artwork, uh, you should also hit patreon.com slash beckyhop. That is my Yay. girlfriend, and she does amazing artwork. Yes, if you she look does. at Yes, if you take a look at my Pokemon Quartz run, that's her artwork. Go get some. All of her commissions are on, all of her commission prices are on her Patreon page. Again, patreon.com slash Becky Hop. And with that, that is gonna be it for this week. Thank you guys for listening. And until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.